Logo controllers with DC inputs can be configured with none, two or four analog inputs. With none configured, we have eight digital inputs. With two configured, you lose I7 and I8, which are then used as analog input one and two. With four configured, inputs I1 and I2 become analog inputs three and four. Configuration is done through the logo interface or through LogoSoft. A zero to 10 volt input will result in an internal count of 1000. A zero to five volt signal can be used, but this will result in loss of half the resolution and the maximum reading will be 500. A potentiometer can be used to drive the analog input. On the simulator, 10 volt supply is generated for the pot, but we can use the 24 volt supply if we add in a voltage dropping resistor in series. In this sample circuit, we're using a 10K potentiometer and we need 10 volts at the top terminal to get 1000 counts internally. We need to take into account the internal input impedance of 80 kilo ohms, which in parallel with the 10K pot will give a resistance of about 8.9 kilo ohms. So adding 12K in series for a 24 volt supply will give about 10.2 volt with the pot at maximum. If you want to calibrate the pot a bit better, you could go for a 10K resistor and a 5K trimmer pot. Turn the 10K pot to the max and adjust the trimmer to get 1000 on the analog input monitoring display on the logo. You can use this technique to attenuate any analog voltage over 10 volts. Note that the analog inputs are protected up to 28.8 volts, the same as in digital mode. The two most common standards for analog signals in industrial control are 0 to 10 volt and 4 to 20 milliamp. 0 to 10 volt sensors are wired up as shown. They're simple but have several disadvantages. They need three wires. The 0 to 10 volt signals are susceptible to electrical noise due to the high input resistance of the logo's analog inputs. And you can't tell the difference between a zero measurement and a disconnected sensor. The logo range of components includes add-on 4 to 20 milliamp modules, but if you have the basic module inputs to spare and you don't need electrical isolation from the digital inputs, then we can use a resistor to convert from milliamps to volts. We can convert a 4 to 20 milliamp signal to 10 volt input by using a resistor. From Ohm's law, we know that 10 volts at 20 milliamps will need 10 divided by 0 0.02, which equals 500 ohms. This solves several problems for us. We can power the sensor from the loop, provided its internal circuitry can work at 4 milliamps. The 500 ohm input impedance makes the circuit much less susceptible to electrical interference. And we now have what's called a live zero at four milliamps. If a wire breaks, we'll have zero milliamps. And some sensors will indicate a fault condition by giving out three or three and a half milliamps. This can be used to generate an alarm in the PLC program. Note that four milliamps into 500 ohms will give us two volts minimum. So our internal digital reading will be in the range of 200 to 1000. Various companies make a 500 ohm 0.1% tolerance high stability resistor suitable for this application and they cost only a few euro which is a lot less than the cost of an analog input module. Be aware that a loop powered transmitter requires a minimum voltage across its two terminals for it to operate correctly. At 20 milliamps we're going to drop 10 volts on the 500 ohm shunt leaving only 14 volt for the sensor on a 24 volt power supply. This should be fine for most sensors but if you need a few more volts then consider using a 250 ohm shunt if you can tolerate the loss of resolution with a 1 to 5 volt input rather than 2 to 10 volt. Let's have a look at the I.O. simulator. We've got input 7 switched to analog AI1 and the source selector is set to pot. We've escaped out to the clock display and pressing the right cursor key we get to the AI monitor and want to monitor AI1. Turning the pot we can see that we get a range of 0 to 1000. 
Let's say we have a 4 to 20 milliamp pressure sensor with a span of 0 to 60 bar. How do we set this up? Well, here AI1 is fed to an analog amplifier with a gain of 0 0.06, so that full scale 1000 counts gives a reading of 60. The message display box below gives the readout and the indicator bar. Turning the pot shows that's working, but for our 4 to 20 milliamp conversion with a resistor, we need to add in an offset. When 4 milliamp indicates a reading of 0, then the offset is simply minus a quarter of the span. In this case, the span is 0 to 60, so the offset is minus 15 bar. We program that into the analog amplifier, download and test. While we're on the topic, we'll modify to display the reading to one decimal place. We set the decimal places in the message text to 1, but all that does is add a dot so that 60 becomes 6.0. We need to scale the measurement range by a factor of 10. Watch the gain and offsets update as we do. The message text will automatically update the digital readout, but we need to rescale the bar graph, which doesn't know about decimals. It will see the 600 come through at full scale. That's done. So transfer to the logo and test. We can see now that turning the pot about one fifth of the way up results in a reading of zero and we still have a maximum of 60. So all is working fine. I hope this was informative. Leave a comment if you think I've missed anything. Subscribe for more of this kind of stuff and give me a like. Thank you. Mm -hmm.